when you look at the blue line at the bottom, that's MongoDB. Okay. And you can see the consistency. I mean, we got to actually increase the document size significantly before we start to see that ski slope effect. Generative AI applications, they process data a little differently than the relational database. The uh, large language model trainings require rich document structures, sometimes large binary objects that can reach multiple kilobytes, even megabytes in size quite easily, right? So we're not really talking about small, narrow rows with typed attributes. This is semi-structured or unstructured data that not, might not necessarily be strongly typed, right? So rich document data by definition we can't be slow, right? Nothing can be slow in this world. Winners are going to be the ones that do it fast and the ones that do it most efficiently. So this is just the nature of the workload. It's totally different. When you look at the relational database, it was built for a different problem. Bolting on new technology to the old solutions is really not the answer. What we really want is we want storage optimized technologies for the workloads that we're running today with the features that are required for these modern workloads that are built in from the get-go. And this is why evolving the relational database storage for that kind of flexibility, it just doesn't really work very well. Honestly, when I first ran the test, I thought oh, my code was broken. Uh, I didn't think that this could possibly be true. I was running with much larger sizes, which look even worse. I had to drop the item size way down to find that crossover point. It's pretty clear that you need to go down to really, really small documents, right, to get competitive, you know, with Postgres in these tests. Postgres is pretty competitive with really, really small items. I kind of expected that it would be. That's where it likes to shine is tiny things. Uh, as we start to increase the size of those items, you really start to see the overhead of the JSON-B start to come in immediately. You start to see the Postgres JSON attributes start to uh, lag quickly. 